evil lurks in the hearts of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, your neighborhood blue coal dealer brings you the thrilling adventures of The Shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcefully to old and young alike that crime does not pay. As you probably know, reliable sources forecast that all home heating fuels will be scarce this winter. If you heat with coal, you're lucky. You can store coal, but get your order in early. Ask your blue coal dealer to schedule your delivery as soon as he can, and make sure that you order the right size of coal for your furnace. If you're not sure what it should be, ask him. Your blue coal dealer will be glad to inspect your heating plant, and may be able to make other recommendations too, that will help you to get more heat and to burn less fuel. First thing tomorrow, Call the nearest blue coal dealer and ask him to schedule an early delivery of your blue coal. The shadow who aids the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret the hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Dream of Death. <laughs> From a lonely house lie on a gale-swept cliff. A curtain flaps at an open window. A path, a path, house down, down past sharp crags and mossy rock. Down to the wave-lashed beach below. Come along, my darling. We're almost to the beach. There. I'm there. Feel the wet sand beneath our feet. Yes. Listen. Listen to those waves, Will. Crashing against the shore. No. Look at them. Black and hungry. They know. The waves know why we're coming to them. I'm not going to... Hold tightly to my hand. Soon, my darling, we'll be together once again. For all eternity. Slowly. Slowly now. Down into the water. Don't look back. <laughs> No, no, no. See, the water swirling above our knees. What? Oh. Above our waist. Above our shoulders. Fire. Fire. We die. And we never. No. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Wake up, Lyra, for heaven's sake, wake up. Phyllis? Oh. Yes, darling, your sister. It's all right, Lyra, you're all right. You were just having a bad dream. Dream? Oh. oh I was on the beach. In the water. Oh, with my husband. With Kurt. With Kurt. Oh, no, Lyra, no. Don't you remember? What? Oh. He's dead. Kurt was drowned last night. Margaret and I came right down as soon as we got your message, Celeste. Well, I'm awfully glad you're here, Mr. Cranston. So are we, Celeste. If there's anything we can do to help. Yes, after all, Kurt Sander was a friend of mine, even though I didn't see him for some time. Oh, I'm sure you can help both of you. We'll see Lyra in just a moment. She was still sleeping when I went in. The doctor prescribed all the rest she could get. Of course. This is a beautiful view from this window. 
beach down there below the cliffs and the sea beyond? Yes. Kurt loved solitude. There's a wind rising. Must be a storm coming up. It was just this kind of a day that Lyra and Kurt went sailing. You mean when Kurt was lost? Yes. You still haven't told us what did happen, Celeste. Perhaps before we see Lyra, we should know. Oh, yes, of course. Well, they... They were out sailing. A violent squall came up and the boat capsized. How off? Apparently, Kurt struck his head against the boat when it turned over at him. I see. Anna, our housekeeper, and I were shopping at the time. When we got back, we... We found Lyra down on the beach, nearly dead from shock and exhaustion. How is she now? Well, physically, the doctor says she'll be all right, but... Oh, Mr. Cranston, it's her mind. She... Well, she insists that she's going to die. Die? She thinks that Kurt's spirit has returned to take her back with him into the sea. How terrible. She says they had some kind of a weird pact with death. Well, do you think you'll be able to reason with her, Mr. Cranston? Try, right, Celeste. I'll do everything I can. I I'll see if she's awake. Now, I'll be right back. Lamont, it... Darling, what are you looking at? These books are on spiritualism. I've almost forgotten. Forgotten what? Kurt Sander was a student and a firm believer in life after death. Come on, Margo. Just woke up. Lyra. Lyra, this is Lamont Cranston. Lamont Cranston? Yes, Mrs. Sander. I was a friend of Kurt's, and uh, this is Margo Lane. Hello, Lyra. You've come to take me away, haven't you? You must, you must take me away from this house. No, they can't, Lyra. You know you can't leave yet, not until you're better. But I can't stay here. I he'll come back for me. Oh, no, he won't, Mrs. Sandler. Yes, he will. He, he said, if I should die before you, my darling, I will turn from wherever I may be and take you with me. Mrs. Sandler, that isn't possible. It is. He, he'll come back. I mustn't stay here. He'll come back for me. He'll come back. No, no, listen. Is that you? Yeah, well. Quiet. Get back, Margot. I'm those French windows. Oh, oh, that's a woman. Oh, it's Anna, our housekeeper, Mr. Cranston. Anna, what on earth are you doing? I just wanted you to let me in the door. Why didn't you come in through the back? I just came up from the beach. I was gathering clams for dinner. All right, Anna. Come inside so I can shut these doors again. You best shut them tight. Why? I've been down on the beach, and I've seen it. Seen what, Anna? Well, Anna, what did you see down on the beach? I saw another storm coming up. Another storm like the one the night Mr. Sander died. <laughs> made you scream, Mrs. Sandler. Well, I, I was asleep, and something woke me up. I felt cold fingers around my throat. It was Kurt. He'd come for me. Look, Lamont, French door. Wind must have blown them open. That's probably what woke her up. I'll have a look outside. Yeah, it was Kurt. No, no Mrs. Mrs. Sandler. Oh, what happened, Margot? I was asleep. I heard a scream. She thought someone was in the room with her husband. Oh, no, darling. It just couldn't be. Right, Mrs. Sandler. There's no sign of anyone. You merely had another bad dream. That's what you see. Anna. I've been outside the room, listening. It was him, wasn't it? He's lonely. He's come back. Anna, what are you trying to do? Go back to your room, Anna. All right. But I know. I know. Now, Mrs. Sander, try to understand it. It was all in your mind. Do you understand? Yes. All in my mind. I try to go back to sleep. Celeste. Yes. I think it'd be a good idea if you slept in here for the rest of the night. Oh, yes, of course I will. Come on, Margaret. 
What is it, Lamont? There is something wrong, I can tell. Let's get your coat. I'm going to do a little investigating. But... I lied in order not to frighten Mrs. Sander. I found this just outside the French doors. Seaweed? Yes, seaweed. Someone or something brought up from the ocean below. <laughs> Belong to you. To make him go back to the sea and leave you alone. That's insane. Now take them to him. You know where he is? In the cave at the bottom of the cliff. How do you know? Have you seen him? Have you? No. There's a black pool in the cave, and I've seen strange footprints around. No! Things live in that pool. Terrible things that come up from the sea. No, no, don't. Don't go near there, please. I'll be all right. Nothing will harm me. No! He doesn't want me, Miss Vera. He wants you. But what are we looking for, Lamont? Anything here on the beach, Margaret, that might give us a clue as to who or what left the seaweed outside Lyra's room? You think someone has taken advantage of Kurt's death to deliberately frighten Lyra out of her mind? It seems to be the logical explanation right now. That old housekeeper, Anne, has certainly been acting strangely enough. Yes. I haven't been able to make up my mind yet whether Anna is a slightly demented old servant or a very shrewd woman. Mm. And another thought has crossed my mind. I can Kurt was a very odd person, as I remember him, Margaret. Moody, introspective, and, as we know, a firm believer in spiritualism. Well, you... You aren't suggesting that there might be some basis for this wild idea Lyra has about Kurt returning from the dead? Nobody's ever discovered just how far spiritualism can go, Margaret. That's a fantastic idea, Lamar. Fantastic and terrible. But an idea we may have to consider... We're going to learn the truth about Lyra's dream of death. Harmonist folk. The lantern down here. Kneel down by the pool. Now, give him the things. Give him the things and tell him to go away. Leave us alone. Here's the picture. Next. Now, someone kick over the lantern. Who's there? Who's there? Come closer. From the cupboard. Kurt! You! No! No, you're dead! Boy, no! Don't! We are pushing my head under the wall! Oh! oh. Turn to the shadow in just a moment.
Friends, you're missing a lot. If you don't have a blue coal temp master heat regulator on your coal furnace, you're missing the wonderful work-saving ease that automatic temperature control gives. You're missing the even steady healthful heat that could be yours. And you're missing the big savings in fuel that a temp master makes possible. Altogether, you're missing the carefree heating comfort you should have. But why wait any longer? Call the nearest blue coal dealer and ask him to demonstrate the new blue coal temp master. The temp master is an entirely new kind of automatic heat regulator for coal furnaces. The electric eye thermostat upstairs keeps your home exactly at the temperature you set on the dial, eliminating all those trips to the basement to adjust dampers. Furnace controls are operated automatically as needed, and the electric eye thermostat actually shows you the exact position of those dampers. This winter, save coal, save trouble, and get much better, much more healthful heat with a blue coal temp master. It can be easily installed without interrupting the heat in your home. Only blue coal dealers have them. Blue coal dealers are listed in the classified section of your telephone book. Call the nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow and ask him for a demonstration of the new blue coal temp master. And now, back to the shadow. <laughs> On the trail of a man who apparently has returned from the dead to claim his bride, Margot and Lamont are plunged into a series of weird events. Now we find them walking down a dark beach, while above them tower the black cliffs that rise forebodingly. Suddenly, Margot stops and touches Lamont's arm. Lamont, look up ahead. Good Lord, come on. Body here in the water by the edge of the shore. Yes. It's Hannah, the hospital. Is she dead? Yes, drowned apparently, and her body washed ashore. This is strange, Margaret. What? There are finger marks around her neck. Someone deliberately held her head under the water. No. Not what are you doing? I'm going to try something loose. Yes, touch my hand. My hand. It's a torn piece of cloth, and there's a Gold button on it. Yes, the kind of button that's usually found on men's yachting jackets. And Kurt was in sailing clothes when he died. Yes, Mother, he was. Hey, look here. It's a faint trail in the sand. Looks as though Anna's body was dragged down here. The trail leads up to a kind of opening in the cliff. Come on. Lord, I just don't understand. And neither do I, but there must be a logical explanation behind all this. I've got a feeling we're getting close to the answer. I certainly hope so. Here we are. It's kind of a tunnel into the base of the cliff. You're not going in. Yes. Stay behind me. I'll use my flashlight. Why, it's a big cave. Yes. You see anything? Black pool of water in the center of the cave. You sure that's all? Yeah? Oh, thank heavens. Oh, let's get out of here. Give me the creeps. Quiet, Mark. What? Look out through the mouth of the cave. Out there on the beach. Someone kneeling down by Anna's body. What? It's the left. Yes. What would Lyra's sister be doing out there on the beach at this time? She's coming towards you. She's following the same trail up here we followed. Stand back, Margot. I'll switch off the flash. Are you in there? Come on. What's that? Kirk, was that you? No, sir. She's <laughs> running away up the path to the house. Yes. Lamont, do you realize what this means? I am beginning to, Margot. Kurt is alive, not dead. He must be the one who's trying to drive Lyra mad. Anna must have found the truth, and that's why he killed her. Perhaps and perhaps not, Margot. Now I think I can find out. How? Then Celeste will tell me a great deal when she talks to the shadow. The gun. 
Damn it, must be. <laughs> <laughs> Who's there? Who laughed? Shadow laughed, Celeste. The shadow? The gun! Somebody took the gun from my hand. But who? Where? No one sees the shadow. Shadow, what do you want? What are you going to do with this gun, Celeste? What? Are you going to kill your sister, Lyra? No, why should I do that? Because you haven't been able to make her kill herself the way you and Kurt planned. That's not true. Kurt's not dead. You've been working together. That's true, isn't it, Celeste? No. Kurt was in love with you, wasn't he? But Lyra stood in your way. Oh, yes, he was in love with me. He begged me to marry him. And Kurt, he's alive. Yes, yes, that's why I came for the gun. He's out of his mind. He killed Anna and he'll kill my sister, too. What were you doing down on that beach by Anna's body? I was looking for Lyra. She's gone. Oh, he'll kill her, don't you understand? Oh, Shadow, you've got to find him before it's too late. Shadow will find the truth, Celeste. If you've lied, I'll be back. You'll answer to the Shadow. <laughs> Lira? Lira, are you in there? Try the door, Lamar. Empty. Yes, Celeste told the shadow the truth. Kurt must have taken her off somewhere. The French doors are standing wide open again. Yes, look at this, Margot, over here. Some muddy footprints on the carpet. What do we do? I don't... Wait a minute. Hmm? Margot, this isn't mud on these footprints. It's slime. Green slime. The kind that grows on rocks. You think Kurt is taking us to the cave? I don't know, Margot. All I know is we better get back there as fast as we can. <laughs> Flashlight, darling, you make too good a target. Yes, if Kurt's as mad as he appears to be, he'd probably shoot first and ask questions later. Easy now, darling. What? Over there. Good Lord, it's Kurt in there. Lyra! I'm coming, Lyra. Try to hold on. Lyra! It's all right, Lyra. I've got you. Oh, come on. He had a gun. He was going to kill me. I grabbed his arm and I went off. Lyra? Stay in it. You better lie here for a moment. I better have a look at Kurt. Well? Well, the light a match. Mark what? He's dead, Mark. Why? I suppose it's just as well. Yes, I think it is, Margo. Look at this over here. Yes. A shallow grave. Good heavens, you mean he was going to kill the air and bury her there? No, Margo, I mean that Kurt Sander came out of this grave. Lyra shot didn't kill him. He's been dead for at least two days. <laughs> Mark, why on earth are we leaving the cave with Lyra still in there with that body? No time to explain, Margo. I want you to get up the house right away and be careful. Is that all? Yes. By the time you get there, Margo, the shadow will have trapped the real killer. Lyra, Oh, 
helping you. You're dead. Keep away. Keep away. Why did you kill me, Lyra? Oh, I didn't kill I swear. Yes, you did, Lyra. You must confess. Tell the truth. No. If you don't, Lyra, I'll tell them. I'll tell them your story of how I drowned was a lie. No. Tell them you killed me two days ago in this cave. Please. I'll tell them how you crushed my skull with a rock. No, no, I'll please. tell them how you killed Anna, too. Covered yourself with seaweed and pretended to be me. And confess. Confess. Oh, right, I did. I killed Anna. I killed you both. Now go away. <laughs> <laughs> No, Lyra. Who are you? Who are you? The shadow. No. Yes, Lyra. You confess to the shadow. You've condemned yourself to death, Lyra. Because now the shadow knows. <laughs> Lamont, it's incredible. I can hardly believe that Lyra is a murderer. Well, apparently she's a violently jealous woman, Margot. Kurt arranged a rendezvous with her near the cave, asked her for a divorce. Told her he wanted to be free to marry her younger sister, Celeste. And she flew into a jealous rage, killed him, left his body in the cave. Then her story of the drowning, her dream of death, all those weird happenings, even Anna's murder, were done to frighten people away from here so that no one would learn the truth. Yes. After she killed Anna, and after we started investigating, she became panicky. So she decided to dispose of Kurt's body. Exactly. In the dim light, we thought Kurt and Lyra were struggling together. When she heard me call to her, she fired a shot in a crazy last-ditch effort to make us think that Kurt had been alive up to that point. He was responsible for everything. Oh, how horrible. And stupid. Yes. Well, it's all over now, thank goodness. That's all over Except that soon Lyra will be going to her death. This time, it won't be a dream. And now, let me present Blue Coal's distinguished heating authority, John Barclay. Thank you, Andre Bruce, and good evening, friends. Here's an important tip on economical home heating it will save you time, trouble, and fuel. If you tend your furnace fire the right way, you'll find that your fire will burn more slowly and evenly, and that you'll get more heat from the fuel you burn. When you add coal, do it like this. First, shake the grates gently until the first faint red glow is visible in the ash pit. Then, with the shovel or a small hole, pull the live coals from the back of the firebox up toward the feed door forming a sloping hollow that leads toward the back. Into this hollow, put your fresh coal. Leave a few glowing coals just inside the fire door to consume gases. The way to conserve coal is not by skimping. Keep a deep fire at all times. I thank you. This story is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the shadow will demonstrate that... The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, your friendly blue coal dealer brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. The shadow is presented by the DL&W Coal Company, distributors of blue coal. Lamont Cranston is played by Brett Mollison, Margot by Grace Matthews. Your announcer is Andre Baruch. 
Remember, it's blue coal for finest heating service. It's blue coal for finest modern equipment. It's blue coal for the best home heat money can buy. <laughs>